There you go. Well, good morning, everyone. Give me a wave if you can see me. Brilliant. Welcome to this special Easter service on this Easter Sunday. This is just amazing. For those of you on Zoom, thank you so much for being here. Those of you on Facebook, welcome to you all. This is such a wonderful day and a very special service. I don't know about you, but I'm, I've been all tingly just thinking about what we, we are achieving here and seeing you all gathered there is just so wonderful. We're going to go straight in and sing our first song. Um, and that is going to be played and played by our wonderful little music group, that's Vanessa, Imogen and Graham. Now, um, all the way through the service, whenever you see words in bold, that's the clue for you to join in. Now, you might feel a little bit strange joining in in your lounge or your kitchen, but just go for it. And um, during the song, if you haven't already got a little bit of bread and something to drink ready, do go and get that now, so you can running out of the room. Um, and if you've got anything like a percussion instrument, you might like to wave that about or make a jolly noise. Maybe you just go outside for a minute and bang your drums or your cymbals. So we're gonna start with our wonderful opening song, Jesus Christ is risen today. be with you and also with you hallelujah christ is risen he is risen indeed hallelujah i'm going to start with this collect prayer for today as our opening prayer this prayer that will be said uh, by christians all over the world God of glory, by the raising of your son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Now over to Paula. Oh, um, is that okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I was just saying, I'm, I'm just a bit overcome by seeing everyone. It's just so wonderful. Um, but in our Easter joy, let's not forget that we come to God um, asking forgiveness for our sins. And ever since the lockdown, um, I've come across in various places the same uh, two verses of scripture. And so I want that to start our time of confession. And it's the verses from 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. When I shut up the heavens so there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from, the, from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And so as God's people, let's pray to God, asking for forgiveness and healing. And it's the usual responses at the end of each section. Risen Jesus, triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins. Our faith is weak and we have lived by our own strength and not the power of your resurrection. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing in your mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, mercy. have mercy. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our ho home in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the God of love and power hear us from heaven, forgive our sins and heal and strengthen us by his spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. We're going to um, we're going to go to our Gloria now to celebrate that forgiveness that we've been given. And um, I'm very grateful to Laura, who's going to play it. The words are really easy. Alleluia, alleluia, sorry, Gloria, Gloria, alleluia, alleluia, Gloria, Gloria, alleluia, alleluia. I think that's right anyway. I haven't got the hymn book here, so let's hope. Over to Laura. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia. And now we're going to have our first reading, and that's over to Jeff Cotton. Thank you, Jeff. Hear the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. 
Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Thank you, Jeff. Um, my fault there that we should have actually had Carrie reading first and then Jeff. So my suggestion is that we treat that as a, almost like a Lectio Divina. Thank you, Jeff. Let's go to Carrie now and then we'll go back to Jeff and we'll listen to it again and see if anything jump, jumps out to us. Is there a phrase or a word that jumps out to us? So now we're going to go back to our, um, our uh, New Testament reading with Carrie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Can everybody hear me? OK, lovely. This is a reading from the Book of Acts. The Gentiles hear the good news. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what's happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us whom God had chosen in advance to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Now, thank you. We'll go back to Jeff and we'll hear our gospel reading for the second time. And do ponder the words as Jeff reads them and think, is, is there a word or phrase that is jumping out to you today? Is God highlighting a word or phrase for you this Easter Sunday? Thank you, Jeff. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. 
So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Well, this is the strangest Easter that I can ever remember. And who, who would have thought it? No church on Easter Sunday. No family lunch afterwards with all the grandchildren or the cousins or nephews. And no Easter egg hunt around the churchyard. I know, especially at Plains, this is a, a massive tradition. I know people are children will be really missing that this year. The coronavirus pandemic is a massive thing. And it has affected all of us. And it's something that we are sharing with people in uh, every part of the world, whether it's lockdown, whether it's um, your job, your work, or whether it's illness. I, I think most of us, well, actually, all of you know somebody that's had the virus, because you all know me. But we all know people in our own families, uh, in our streets, that have been ill or suspected they've got it. And I just want to say um, and celebrate, really, that two members of our congregation, Peter Perry, and Dave Ray, both who had the virus, are both now home. Uh, and I just think that's such a wonderful thing, yeah, a wonderful thing to celebrate. Um, Dave got home last night, and there's a lovely clip on Facebook of his arrival home, and everyone is out in the street cheering and clapping that he's made it home, and he, he walked from the car to his house. It's just wonderful, and we're so, so, grateful to the NHS, aren't we? Let's just give them a round of applause now. Brilliant. Those of you who are watching the service on Facebook, please do feel free to type in your comments and your feedback, your prayers. Please respond to us in that way. And although I can't see that now, I will watch that later. In some ways, with all of the um, sadness that's going on. It does seem un strange to be celebrating and, and we, we have to, uh, I have to inform you that we, we have lost a, a member of our St George's congregation this week and that's our dear sister and a long-standing member of St George's, Dorothy Townsend. Um, if people at Claims, you probably will know of Dorothy as well because she's Steve Callow's sister. So a lot of you will remember Steve and Alfie Callow and Dorothy is Steve's sister. And I'm very sad to say that she died this week from the virus. And we send all our prayers and love to her family. I thought um, the address from the Queen yesterday was wonderful. I mean, she's such a woman of faith and, and what she said was so, so encouraging. She said, Easter will be different this year, but it isn't cancelled. We need it as much as ever. And I just absolutely love that. Just as the discovery of the empty tomb gave Jesus' followers hope in, the light, uh, in light and darkness, so too does it give us hope. And, and that is the miracle of Easter. The tomb was empty. When the Marys arrived at the tomb, the body was gone, the tomb was empty. And our churches may be empty this morning, but so was the tomb. And if you can, on your walk, if you're allowed out, if you can walk past either of the churches today, you will see that somebody, must have been the Easter Bunny, I think, somebody has been and decorated both the churches uh, with bows and ribbons, and a sign saying, church might be empty, but so is the tomb. Jesus is alive. 
after this pandemic is over and it will end, it will be over, I believe there is something significant for us to learn from this experience. Um, as individuals, as a church, as churches, as a society, and as a world. We love our churches, but this pandemic teaches us they are not the most important thing. And what the pandemic proves is that no building can uh, or should retain the presence of Jesus Christ. The peace, the presence, and the promise that Jesus brought when he broke out of the tomb that Easter morning needs to be out there, out here, on Facebook, on Zoom, wherever we can take it. Nothing has stopped us sharing this worship today and sharing the gospel and sharing in communion. As Elizabeth mentioned at the beginning, but yes, there is debate as to whether this really is communion or not, but do watch Robin Parry's uh, excellent presentation on that, that's also on Facebook. And he firmly believes that Jesus Christ breaks all barriers and that the bread, the wine that you have in your home is blessed and holy through the power of uh, Jesus Christ and his life. That across the internet, this virtual communion that we're going to share today is just as authentic as the communion we have in church. But what I want to focus on uh, in this address this morning is the three um, amazing aspects of Easter, and that is the presence, the peace, and the promise of Jesus Christ. So first of all, think about the presence. When Mary Magdalene and the other Mary um, came to the tomb and found it was empty, it, it's hard to imagine how confused and, and anxious they would have been. In the other Gospels, in Mark's and Luke's versions, the women come to the tomb with spices to anoint Jesus' body. But in this gospel, in Matthew, the women bring nothing with them. They just come and it says to see. And that word, the Greek word that's used there for see, is much more intense than just simply going to have a look. It's much more like keeping watch or keeping vigil more like scrutinize. It suggests that they go to see in order to understand, sort of like, oh, I see. It's that sort of see. Now there's all sorts of clues in this reading to help us see too um, that Jesus is present, that the natural order of things has uh, been changed forever. And one of the, um, one, one of the clues that I particularly like is this little detail that says when um, Mary comes before Jesus, um, the Marys don't just fall to his feet to worship him, they hold on to his feet. And why would they do that? I mean, why would you fall at someone's feet and then grab hold of their feet? It is rather strange, isn't it? Well, apparently, <clears throat> they have to understand, we have to understand, that in Greek tradition, ghosts didn't have feet. Now, I, I don't know, this is what I've read, but in Greek tradition, ghosts didn't have feet. So when Matthew says they held on to his feet, he's making the point that Jesus is physically present and real. He's not a ghost, he's not some spirit, he's physically present. And I think we can take comfort from that in all of the um, horribleness that we're experiencing at the moment and in the isolation that we're experiencing and especially Jesus is present. He's really with us. If you're on your own, if you're in isolation all alone, take comfort from this that Jesus is present with you. The third aspect of the reading uh, of this message that I want to focus on is this sense of peace that Jesus brings. Do not be afraid, the angel tells the women. Go and tell the disciples that Jesus has been raised from the dead. And when they see Jesus, he says that again, do not be afraid. And some clever person has counted in the Bible how many times those words or a similar sentiment are said. 
and apparently there are 365 mentions or uh, quotes of do not be afraid in the Bible. So there's a do not be afraid for every single day of the year, every single day when you wake up in the morning, especially at this present time, if you wake up feeling um, disconnected or anxious or confused or just worried about the future, Jesus says to you, do not be afraid. The third thing I want to look at is promise. So we've had presence, Jesus is presence, and Jesus is peace when he says to us, do not be afraid. And the third thing is promise. <clears throat> Jesus' resurrection brings life. And the amazing thing about Easter is that the events of Easter give us a guarantee, us, a guarantee of our own resurrection. And that is just incredible. Easter guarantees that we can have life after death. You remember the story maybe of, of Martha at the tomb of her brother Lazarus and Jesus assures her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though they die. If there'd been no resurrection, Jesus would just have been a good person, a wise teacher, a prophet even, who met with a tragic end. And people might remember some of his teachings and quote them, and people might still try to live according to his word. But it's this promise, this promise of resurrection, this promise that death is not the end, that life is more powerful than death. It's that that makes Jesus so significant and makes the Christian hope so important. However we are separated, whether it's in isolation or in death, we will be reunited. We will see our loved ones again. In this pandemic, as we see those statistics every day, those numbers behind which are countless families and, and parents and children and husbands. We need to hold on to this promise. We will be reunited again. And so just to sum up now, this Easter, sun, this Easter Sunday, just by us coming together, I can only see the faces on the screen that I've got. And I know if I were to swipe my screen, I would have more faces. Just by coming together, we are witnessing to the power of the resurrection, to the presence of the resurrection, the peace and the promise that Jesus Christ brings to our lives. Jesus is alive. He's present with us in our anxiety and loss. And his healing presence can mend our broken heart. And Paul is going to refer to that in our prayers, that Jesus can mend our broken heart. Jesus is alive and his peace comforts us and reminds us, do not be afraid. Jesus is alive. He promises us there is and always will be hope. Hope of new life. Hope of everlasting love. We may not have been able to walk the streets on Good Friday. We may not have been able to attend and celebrate at the Passion Play. But we are witnessing to our faith in public in many other ways. And thinking of all those people who've been um, making bags and um, Raven Tabella, ma making bags and um, sewing scrubs and making visors and John Brady was down at the office getting um, old, the old OHP acetate as somebody who's going to make those into visors and I know um, Joe Siddles and her company they've been helping furnish the Nightingale Hospital at the NEC. We are witnessing to our faith out there in the world, against all odds, we are sharing in the brokenness of Christ's body, 
through the bread and wine of communion. The body of Christ is broken indeed, fragmented, dispersed, and in isolation. But together we can show the world that death has been overcome. Jesus is alive. His spirit is with us. And one thing I know, we will never go back to what we did before, to the lives we led before, as a church, as a community, as a world. Because one thing we've learned is we need each other. We need every single person. This Easter, go and tell the whole world the tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now Paul is going to lead us in. We say together the creed. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. And we believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now is it time to pray? Yeah. Okay. Well, before we start our, our intercessions, and we will have a formal time of intercession, um, but I know there are some young people out there. I can't see you all. Um, but I know I've scrolled through and I know we've got lots of families and um, I'll just move my candle because I don't want any pyrotechnics. Um, but as you know, I've, I've been uh, keeping hold of my prayer tree since lockdown and everybody's concerns are on there from um, people's names on our pew sheets to people who've been in hospital and come home um, or key workers. All our usual concerns are on there. People's brothers, people's um uh, father-in-law, people who have um, Facebooked their messages asking for their names of their loved ones or situations to go on there. And so I, I propose that when we come to, to pray for those in need, I'll just say those on our prayer tree, because I think I've sort of encapsulated all your thoughts as well. But um, especially people on Facebook, if uh, you can type in any others, we have lots of leaves still. Uh, the green and the orange leaves for our requests. But we do also have some yellow ones, which is our answered prayer. It's so important that we include answered prayer on our prayer tree to encourage us and to show God's goodness. It brightens up and balances up the tree. So um, please also send your answered prayer. And we give thanks um, for Peter Perry and for David as well. Um, who have come home and we give thanks to Rev Jo who's also um, come out the other end of the virus. So they're on our yellow leaves. But get back to you youngsters at home. I also have for our prayer activity today, um, I was going to do prayer chains and then I thought it would be nice to make heart shaped ones. Um, because as Joe said, talked about Jesus mending our broken hearts. So it would be really nice for you to start one of these and add to it and maybe display it in your window at home or hanging from a tree. Um, and when I mentioned it to Jo, she said oh, it would be really nice actually when we all get together, if we do make our own prayer chains, heart prayer chains, to just put them all together around our church. Um, so it can be prayers of thanks, prayers of hope, 
prayers of um, praying Jesus promises, as well as our requests. So that's just another idea. So just to take a bit of time out, um, I'm sure you're more accomplished than I. I'm really not crafty at all, as you Kingdom Arts people will know. Um, but it's best to have a, a, a piece of squared paper. So if you've got A4 like mine, just fold one corner to the other and cut it across and you get a nice square piece of paper. Mine's orange, so you can see it hopefully. And then fold it that way and cut out. If you've got a template, that's great. Oh, Alison's there. Hello, Alison. <laughs> Are you doing it as well? <laughs> um, so folding it that way, just sort of free cut from the corner of where the fold is, not the open end, but the, the folded end. It's just to pre, just cut round a sort of half a heart shape. Um, so you get your heart shape like so. Yes, Alison's got one. I can't see anybody else. Oh, Elizabeth. Yeah, far better than me. And then cut just inside, probably about half an inch or two centimetres if you're that way inclined, uh, and cut out another shape. So you have your heart shape. Like so. And you've still got room to write around the edges. Yes? That won't be wasted. I'm going to, hey, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that won't be wasted. I'm going to make some tree, some leaves for my prayer tree on that one. And then this is the bit where we talk about God mending our broken hearts because I'm going to ask you to cut the bottom, just up the fold on the bottom to break the heart. And the idea then is when you make a second one, you can join it and either staple it or sellotape it together. Oh, John's, John's onto it. Brilliant. Okay. And, and I just thought, you know, if you've got different colored paper or plain white paper and you want to decorate it as well, um, I think it'd just be a lovely way of praying praying our way through this lockdown uh, and keeping hold of God's promises, um, God's peace, and knowing that God is present with us as we do it. So if you have any more paper and you want to do it as we pray, then please carry on. Otherwise, I'm going to lead us in a time of, of intercession. And when we get to the sentence, risen Lord, in your mercy, the response is, mend our broken hearts. Risen Lord, in your mercy, mend our broken hearts. So in hope and joy, let us pray to our Father. We pray for all God's people, scattered, isolated, confined to their homes, unable to be united physically as your church. Inspire and encourage us wherever we are, that we may hold fast to your presence, your promises and your peace, that we may never feel afraid and that we may seek your face and know your love for us. Risen Lord, in your mercy, mend our broken heart. We pray for our world and its leaders and governments in this difficult time and for all people across the world. Take our anxiety and confusion and frustration and restore us. Renew our societies, our economies and our environment. Transform our world and reconcile us to you that we may follow your ways of justice and truth. Risen Lord, in your mercy, mend our broken hearts. We pray for those suffering in body, mind or spirit. We offer to you all those mentioned on this prayer tree. And in the silence, 
or out loud, because we can't hear you, you're on mute, but say the names of those people for whom you are burdened. And if you're on Facebook, please type them in. I just want to pray this morning for Hector and his family. Pray for Jackie's dad. In your tender compassion, rest your healing hand and your peace on those for whom we pray. Risen Lord Jesus, in your mercy, hear our, mend our broken hearts. We pray for those who have recently died. Remembering Dorothy from our congregation at St George's. Welcome Dorothy and those who've recently died into your kingdom. Comfort those who mourn and reassure them of your promise of eternal life. Risen Lord Jesus, in your mercy, mend our broken hearts. And let's pray for one another. The joy of being able to see each other's faces we're separated, but we're joined into one holy family as one body. Let's pray for one another that God will pour on us his Holy Spirit and fill our hearts with Easter joy today and always until we can meet again and be close to one another. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Paula, and um, I look forward to um, the day when we can tie all our prayers up together and decorate our churches. Now, I would normally at this point say, would you please stand? But I think you can stay sitting down, that's fine. So we're going to share the peace now, and you, obviously we can share the peace in uh, whichever way we want. Um, you can um, wave or um, pray or Victoria's peace be with you, whatever you want to do. But first of all, the risen Jesus stood before his disciples and said to them, peace be with you, my peace I leave with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share a sign of God's peace. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm going to get a photo of it. Now we're going to sing again, and we're going to sing. <laughs> waving. 
We're going to sing Now the Green Blade Rises. Thank you to the music group. Before we start the Eucharistic prayer, um, I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, yes, before we start the Eucharistic prayer, I just want to do a, another quick sound check. Satan says it's gone a bit crappy. So, um, can everybody put thumbs up if you can hear me? Is it okay? Yeah? Okay. He's just fiddling with something. So. <coughs> The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards the world. In love you gave us Jesus Christ, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death, your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them by saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks 
every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to meet your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night that he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, this is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, this is my body. This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feet in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> So we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we take the bread. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! I do hope that you've been able to share bread and wine. I'm trying to look at the, the pictures of you all. I can see 
and sharing with one another. That's really lovely. I can see um, you see Lily and Raya waving to you. Can you say hello to all the children. I can see. Yeah, I can see Lily and Raya, and I can see. I think that's Emily. Might be Emily. And I can see Bella. Do that. <laughs> and so we say, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. <clears throat> So it's rather strange, isn't it? But it's really lovely. I can see, see you all. And on Facebook, hopefully you can be typing in some comments and um, hopefully that you, you've had your feast as well. You've had your communion. Um, isn't that just amazing? I mean, it's just Sunday that we've managed to, to do that. So um, thank you. I want to thank Elizabeth because I wouldn't be able to do this without her. Um, and now I'm going to thank Vanessa and Imogen and Graham because we're going to sing now our final song, Thine Be the Glory. And um, I know we can't hear each other, but do, do raise the rafters, won't you? And sing your heart, down. Final um, uh, affirmation and blessing. Um, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to everyone that's enabled this 
worship to happen today. Um, although it feels so different, um, I do really hope that you, like me, feel this wonderful sense of connection with each other, that for all our separate homes, um, we've been able to come together today. And it's just so lovely to see you all. And we just look forward to the, the day when we will be back together and we can actually hug each other. Um, who knows when that will be? Um, I think we need to have a little chat about whether we're going to do this every Sunday. Um, and that really depends on the, the sort of technical support to see whether they're willing to do that and whether this is something that you would like. So do give me your feedback. Do on Facebook, give us some feedback. Would you like to do this again? Um, and on uh, uh, those on Zoom, please do email me and let me know what you thought. Um, but I think it would be really good if we could do something. So um, we'll just go to our uh, final dismissal now. And uh, sorry, just as well, do, do to say, if anybody does um, need anything or just feeling um, lonely or want some prayer, please give me a ring and we will um, arrange for someone to sit and have a chat with you, not physically, obviously. Um, or if you're worried about anybody else, please give me a ring. Uh, 780200 is my number. The office obviously is closed at the moment. And so now, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. And on those you love and care for, his peace and blessing. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.